this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Is anyone glad out there today? Is anyone glad? Well, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, let's give God some praise. Give him the glory because he's been good. You know what? He has been better than that. God is awesome. So let me ask you a question. Do you belong to him? Do you belong to him? Songwriter says, I've been captured by a love I can't explain. My life's forever changed I've abandoned everything I've ever known Now I surrender My life is not my own I belong to you I belong
praise be to God and we thank God that we have somebody we can belong to for certainly he is one that has kept us uh, so we understand and are clear about the fact that our life is not our own and it is to him that we belong we give ourselves to him and I know brothers and sisters without a shadow of a doubt when you give yourself to the Lord when you give yourself over to the Lord things get better in your life. When you give yourself over to the Lord, you have protection for your life. When you give yourself over to the Lord, he will provide for you. And we give God praise that he does not tell us to sacrifice and give ourselves unto him. And he does not care for those who make him a priority. So we say hallelujah unto our God. and Praise him for his great acts in our lives. Praise be to God. And we listen, we thank you and say welcome to the shallow experience we honor the lord and for him leading you out of all of the churches that are on facebook live uh, we honor the lord for how he has led you to come and be a part of us today welcome and thank you to every shallow member of shallow nation to all the shallow nights and to our guests uh, we've come to lift up the name of jesus on this day for he has been so good and is indeed worthy to be praised. A few uh, things that I want to bring forth to you, a couple of observations and announcements uh, before we move further into the worship experience. Um, be reminded that we have Bible study uh, this Wednesday from six at 6.30. We are only there for an hour or less, uh, for an hour or less, so we will uh, dig deeper from whatever the sermon is from this morning. Uh, we will dig deeper into that topic uh, on Wednesday. We had a wonderful time this past week. Uh, so we are thanking God for the privilege of being able to come through together through technology to be able to study the word of God together. So come on, join us. Uh, tell a friend 630 um, on Wednesday, uh, 630 on Wednesday for one hour or less. Uh, and we will come together to uh, deep into dig into the deep riches of God's word. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, uh, for uh, our college students, for our college students and parents and family of those, uh, our college students, we want, it is that time again uh, for you to turn in applications. Uh, so we want to make you are aware and for you to spread the word uh, that scholarship applications are due uh, from our college students by the last Sunday in this month, which is January the 31st. Uh, the last Sunday in this month, uh, January 31st, our applications are due. That gives you a few weeks. Uh, it does not take long for those to complete those applications, but we've given you a few weeks uh, to get those into us. If you have any questions, you can touch bases with uh, Deacon Larry Haley or uh, Sister Davenport or any member of the scholarship committee. They could give you further instructions. But Janu January the 31st uh, is the deadline, and we want to make sure that we get that information out to all of our college students. Amen. Amen, because we believe in being of a support to those who are trying to better themselves and trying to uh, go further in their educational pursuits. Uh, so we want to make sure that our fingerprint, the fingerprint of Shallow Baptist Church, uh, is in the ink that is written on those degrees when you finish up. And you'll be able to know without a shadow of a doubt uh, that your church played a part and supported you and was the wind at your back to help you to get to your desired end. Amen? Amen. Well, listen, um, we are here today, this morning, um, and we want to uh, pay homage to uh, an individual who, here in the very city that we uh, live in, his life ended here, but we celebrate his life, um, none other than the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Uh, we celebrate him on today. Now, let's be clear. We do not worship him because we only worship God. So somebody would say, well, Pastor, why are we taking time doing worship uh, to acknowledge him? Because we don't worship him, but we honor and acknowledge the work that he did on our behalf. Because the work that he did on our behalf uh, was about the one whom we worship. Let me say it again. We don't worship MLK. Uh, we don't worship Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but we honor and acknowledge him because the work that he did on our behalf was representative of the one that we worship. And we only worship the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And it was, brothers and sisters, that speaking out uh, for those who were less fortunate, those who were the marginalized, those who um, did not have a voice, he spoke for them. He spoke for us. And that work that he did years ago um, was, was, was indicative of his love for people and his love for God. And it will benefit individuals for generations and generations and generations to come. Um, I'm grateful, though I was not alive then, and even my children certainly were not alive then, but we are yet beneficiaries of the work and the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So we definitely celebrate him on today. And we understand, even looking at our country now, and the reality of, of looking at individuals rooted in hate, rooted in uh, white supremacy and white privilege, uh, storming the capital. Uh, these individuals that have ideologies that do not believe that there should be a level playing field. Here we are, Dr. King left here in 1968 and we're in 2021, still dealing with some of the same things. It has gotten better, but we've still got a long way to go because it is clear that those negative influences are still interwoven into the very fabric of our country. So, yes, we, they sunk during those days of Dr. King that we were yet trying to overcome. And it is clear that we're yet still trying to overcome even today. But we thank God for the progress that has been made. And we ask God for the strength and power to continue to press forward, to speak for those who have no voice to look out for those who are the, le the lost, the last, and the left out. To be able to be there for individuals as the church. To continue to live out the dream. For it was indeed Dr. King's dream that one of these old days that we will be able to tell the story that we have overcome. So let us continue to celebrate Dr. King and let us continue on the journey to overcome. Hallelujah. I do believe. So right where you are, as we celebrate Dr. King and celebrate our journey, come on, lift your voices right where you are at home. You see the memories on the screen. Lift your voices. We shall. We shall. sing it one more time. Someday. We're yet pressing toward the mark for liberation for all parties. We shall we shall overcome we shall we shall overcome we shall we shall Someday. We shall. We shall. Well, listen, we might as well give God praise in advance. Lift your voices and sing with me. We give God the praise. We Come on. We give you all the glory. Come on. We've come a long way. we got a long way to go. But we give God praise in advance. Hallelujah, God. Come on, worship. Come on, worship. Come on, worship. Come on, one more time. We give you. We give you all the glory. We're going to 
to overcome. And we don't wait till it's over. But we give God praise. Come on, one more time. One more time. Let's worship him. We give you. One more time for the Holy Ghost and then we're moving on. Hallelujah. Lift your hands right where you are in your home. We give you all. Come on, lift your voices right where you are. Come on and give him glory. We worship you. We worship you. you God we worship you thank you God you've kept our people in the midst of it all we've only made it thus far because of you God and we give you all all of the praise well, we are moving forward into our worship experience continuing to go higher and further uh, but we want to respond in words and worship of praise but even worship in our giving for it's giving time here at Shiloh um, we thank God that all that Lord has given us all that he has provided for us all the ways that he has made on our behalf so we ask now that you would condition our hearts and prepare to give as we look at what the record says to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so there might be meat in my house prove me now says the Lord of hosts and see what I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. And there are some witnesses in the room and on Facebook Live that can testify that the Lord has opened windows, that the Lord has provided, the Lord has made ways uh, that has absolutely blown your mind. So we want to challenge each and every person today uh, that, do, that have not tried the Lord in with the tithe because we understand clearly uh, that tithing is not a financial issue tithing is a faith issue it's a faith issue and i dare you to try god i tried him for myself and i know the man is all right so we give god praise for all of you for your faithful giving uh to give us uh the opportunity to continue to do kingdom ministry to do ministry in excellence here at shallow baptist church well listen uh there are four ways in which you can give here at shallow there are four ways in which you can give you can give uh, via cash uh, in our envelope system uh, you can give um, check and make those checks out to Shiloh Baptist Church both of those methods uh, we have a designated time on Saturdays from 12 to 2 where you can come and drop off those um, gifts and tithes and offering and sacrifice uh, in that manner in that way then thirdly you can give via Givelify Givelify uh, is the way that pastor gives um, and we gonna we have given already before we made it to worship today uh, that is a blessed privilege that I I just don't want to stop by the ATM uh, so we give in that matter then fourthly you can give via cash shop dollar sign SBC Memphis dollar sign SBC Memphis and you can give back into to the kingdom of God and this local uh, soul here at Shiloh Baptist Church but either way we have you covered uh, we are multi-generational in methodology of how we are able to give and try to be that as relates to how we do ministry. But we thank God for you um, and pray God's blessings on you. Let us pray. God in heaven, we love you and we thank you. We bless you today for your grace and mercy. We thank you, God, for how you have loved us and kept us, how you have made ways for us. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to give to a method to show you how much we appreciate you. So we ask now, God, that you would bless the gifts. Bless the givers. Let no lack come to their homes because they have given. And God, we even ask for those individuals that have a desire to give but have nothing, that you would make it so, God, that the next time the opportunity presents itself, that you would give them something to be able to sow back into the kingdom. And God, we're going to be mindful as always to give your name the praise, honor, and the glory that's due only unto you. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. And all the redeemed of God said together, amen a man and a man well listen we are going further uh into the worship experience so we want to prepare our hearts now to receive our music ministry as they now lift up the name of jesus
Not because I've been so faithful. Not because I've been so good. You've always been there for me to provide my every need. You were there when I was lonely. You were there through all my pain. Guiding my footsteps, your shelter from the rain. And it was you that made my life complete. You are to me my everything. Is why I sing. You are the joy of my salvation. You're the peace in my storm. Your loving arms protect me. Your shelter from the rain. You are Alpha and Omega, you're the beginning and the end, you're my strong tower, my dearest and best friend, and it was you that made my life complete. You are to me my everything, and that is why I sing, Jesus, I love you, because you care, I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. So Jesus, I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. So Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. It's because you care. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. With everything in me, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Jesus, I love you. So, Jesus, I love you. Oh, yes, I do. I love you. I love you. Because you care. Because Jesus went to Calvary. Yes, he did. To save us. Like you and me, that's love, that's love. Jesus went to Calvary, yes, he did, to save a wretch like you and me, that's love. I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful. He hung his head for me, he died, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, so grateful. They hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head for me, he died. That's love, that's 
love, there's love, there's love, there's love, there's love. And I'm so grateful that that's not how the story ends. Story ends. Cause three days later, he rose again. Just for me, just for you. He rose just for us. And I'm so grateful because that's not how the story ends. Woo! Three days later, he rose again. That's love. That's love. That's love. That's love. So Jesus, I love you. I love you. With everything in me, I love you, Jesus. With everything in me, I love you, Jesus. Because you care for little old me. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. I worship and adore you because I love you. Just want to take the time to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Cause I love you I love you Jesus I love you I love you Jesus I love you I love you because you sacrifice your life way back on Calvary oh they hung him high they stretched him wide and he hung his head for me he died and i'm so grateful that that's not how the story ends because three days later he's rose with all power in his hand because you are you certainly love the Lord. We honor him on today. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you. We bless your name for your grace that yet covers us each and every day. We love you, God, for how you have been everything that we've needed and even been gracious enough to give us some of what we wanted. We say, much obliged. Thank you, sir, because we know we are nothing without you. Now, God, it's preaching time, and I realize there's always the master that I cannot do this without you. So I ask now, God, that you would come in the building even more so and strengthen my body, stabilize my mind, word my mouth, so that I may say that only which you have given me to say. Open up the minds and hearts of these, your people, to receive the word that comes from you. For indeed, God, you are my shepherd and I am your sheep. Lead me, guide me, then God, even make me into what I ought to be. For it's in the mighty, marvelous, matchless, precious, powerful, and persistent name of Jesus Christ. And all the redeemed of God said together, amen, amen, and amen. Giving our praise to God the Father, to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to our comforter and keeper, the Holy Spirit that seals us into the day of redemption. We certainly uh, thank God for one more sunny day. The old saints will say it like this, he didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to do it, but he did. 
and I'm glad about it. Ain't anybody glad about it today? Y'all give me some hearts. Y'all give God praise if you're glad about it, because he didn't have to do it, but he did. So we honor him uh, on this day. Uh, John chapter 5, as we continue uh, in our uh, series for our vision, our church vision, uh, we know as always our mission is that we are on the move for Christ. Uh, we are saving souls, transforming lives, and inspiring purpose. Uh, but how do we do that? We do that by striving to represent him well, to represent Christ well, by being change agents in our communities. Uh, through excellence in worship, we've dealt with evangelism, and today I want to deal with outreach. I want to deal with outreach on today. And if you have the record, uh, whether it be your phone, your tablet, your computer, or your physical word of God, uh, join it with me, John, John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Um, and we'll start at verse 6 uh, through 11. John chapter 5, uh, verses 6, uh, rather 5 through uh, 11. I'm wrong, y'all. My, my eyes is messing up for me. John chapter 6, I was right the first time, verses 5 through 11. John chapter 6, verses 5 through 11. My media got it right. I was wrong. Amen. <laughs> if y'all had a saw the look that Stacy just gave me, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I got a little reverb, uh, Jerry. Um, John chapter 6. I wrote it down wrong on my tablet. That's what it is. John chapter 6, verses 5 through 11. And the Bible says this in your hearing. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove, for he knew himself what he would do. Philip answered him, <clears throat> 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a, a eat. One translation say, says, God, that would be, Jesus, that would be a year's worth of salary uh, that even every person would be able to get one bite to eat. Verse 8, and one of his disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, said unto him, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Take, make the men sit down. And there was, there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number of 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples to them, there were set down. And likewise, and the fishes, uh, as much as they would. I want to talk today from the thought as long as the spirit shall guide and as you su submit with your prayers beyond the walls. Beyond the walls as we seek to deal with our vision statement on the topic of outreach. Beyond the walls. Brothers and sisters, let me set for on, on, the, outre on the onset uh, what our working definition will be concerning this term outreach. Uh, outreach is going, is going outside the walls of the church and into the community to meet the needs of those in need as a method of showing the love of Christ. It's going outside the walls of the church to the community to meet the needs of those that are in need as a method of showing the love of Christ. Brothers and sisters, normally in this particular text, uh, and I even had a call uh, last night that seemingly what I'm going to talk about uh, made no sense as it relates to this particular text of how we're talking about outreach when we're talking about feeding of the 5,000. Stick with me. It'll make sense in just a moment. Because normally, brothers and sisters, we only look at the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 uh, as uh, centering in on the miracle that he only had two fish, five barley loaves of bread. We celebrate that. We shout about that because it talks about the miracle working power of our God talks about that he will provide your needs. And let me stop for a moment before I get deep into what I'm presenting today. And let's re we rejoice in the fact that we do know and we have had testimonies that the Lord is a miracle worker. 
We do not, uh, 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 we do not uh, put it to the side that there is a miracle that has transpired that the Lord has worked on behalf of the individuals, uh, the 5,000, that's men, not including women and children. We know culturally, uh, if we counted every man as having one wife and at least one child, we're looking at anywhere from 10 to 15,000 people that Jesus has uh, created a miracle for and, 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 and blown our minds even in 2021, because there's still scholars that debate about this particular miracle and many of the other miracles because it doesn't make sense in our logical thinking. But Jesus here in our text, brothers and sisters, there's some more lessons that I want to present to us uh, for us to see in, re in regards to our vision of how we go about saving souls, transforming lives and inspiring purpose. And one methodology of how we'll go about doing that is doing outreach ministry. Where is it in the text? Well, there are some outreach components here in our text that we miss if we do what I always tell you. Don't read the Bible too fast or if we only focus on the miracle. The location of the story is, is important. Location, location, location. Look at this. The Bible says that they were outside of the temple walls and still doing ministry. Y'all missing it. They were outside the temple walls, but still doing ministry. And brothers and sisters, that is for us an indication that if we are following after Jesus, we've got to go outside the walls and still do ministry. Bible says that they were outside and, and, and the may, let me say this, that the majority of Jesus's ministry was not done inside of church. Y'all missing the shout. And I know, I know, I know in our minds when we think of doing ministry and being part of ministry and serving in ministry, we think about uh, normally the inside ministry. Certainly we can do ministry inside, but that's in reach. The way that we go about saving souls, transforming lives, and inspire purpose is to do outreach. Because, yes, being on the usher board is being a part of ministry. Being in the choir is part of being in ministry. Being on the deacon uh, uh, team is part of ministry. Being in the media is part of ministry. Being a musician is being part of ministry. The yams is part of ministry. The scholarship committee, that is part of ministry. The benevolence ministry, that is ministry. But all of those things, in most cases, are in reach. Those are things that happen inside the walls. But if we are going to model ourselves after Jesus, the Christ, We've got to recognize that the way that Jesus did ministry in most cases was going outside the walls of the church. Now, Jesus made it. I, I told you when we talked on the first week about worship, that we ought to come in and worship, that we ought to corporately come together because Jesus went to worship as was his custom. But when he went about doing ministry, Jesus was outside the walls of the church. So it's important for us, if we are truly modeling ourselves after Jesus Christ, that we have to go outside and beyond the walls of the church. We have to. Matter of fact, if we are truly going to model the kind of ministry that Jesus did, we must consistently go outside the walls of the sanctuary to meet the needs in the community. It must, outreach I'm talking about, it must be in our DNA as a church. It can't be something that just ha ah, that we think about as an afterthought. It should be a part of the very fabric of what it is that we do as a church. And many times that we don't churches as a whole don't really do outreach because it pushes them outside of their comfort zone. It pushes them outside of their comfort zone and it pushes them to deal with people that they don't necessarily wouldn't rather deal with in their everyday lives. But if we are to model ourselves after Jesus, it has to be part of our DNA and not an afterthought. If we ever want to reach the mass of people and want the mass of the people to come into our church, we must go, we must go outside the church building to where they are. If we ever want the mass of people to come in the church, we as the church must go outside the walls of the church building to where they are. Let me say, explain. I've said this uh, for my Bible study crew. They, they, my Bible study crew have heard me say this over and over again. We have the difficulty, and pastors that are pastoring now have the difficulty um, of trying to do ministry and evangelize and bring in uh, a demographic of 
uh, new churchgoers and new Christians uh, that are the first generation that did not grow up in church, by and large. My generation uh, and before me, by and large, we're not saying everybody grew up in church, by and large, it was the norm that on Sundays, most people went to church. They grew up in church. They was in the Sunday school. Uh, they was in the sunshine band. They was in the children's choir. They did something. But on Sundays, I don't care what you did on Saturday. If, if, in most cases, you know somebody that grew up in church. And therefore, even if they weren't saved, they knew churchology. They knew the terminology of church. They knew uh, what they, they knew coming into church. Uh, don't put your hat on inside the building. They knew um, you don't walk down the center aisle in the middle of church. They, they knew that you don't. Uh, they say you don't walk across the pulpit. They knew you don't put nothing on the communion table. They knew all of these things that we have been put in place. Some things weren't even necessarily biblical, but they were part of church. And so they understood clearly, uh, for most part, people you came in contact with. Now, the generation that we're trying to do outreach for, we got to understand and be clear that most of them didn't grow up in church. They don't know what baptism is. They don't know what communion is. They, they don't know Dr. Watts. Even though we don't sing them much now, I know and love Dr. Watts because I remember as a child how the room would shake. When the church would belt out at Dr. Watts, I, 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 they don't. But the generation we're trying to get does not naturally know all the things that we look at because we would look at people like you don't know Dr. Watts. You don't know what communion means. You don't. But we cannot have that particular mindset when we go and evangelize and do outreach, brothers and sisters, as we go and meet the needs of the people. We cannot have the wrong mindset because they didn't grow up in church. We cannot expect. For the people that we want to come, we cannot expect for those people to care about our Jesus if they have never experienced our Jesus, that our Jesus cares about them. Y'all missing the shout? We cannot expect the people that we're saying need to be in church. Yes, they need to be in church. But don't go in with a judgmental mindset, but we have to go out and serve their needs because we cannot expect them to care about our Jesus if they have never experienced that our Jesus cares about them. Before they'll ever love him, we as a body of Christ have to show the love of Christ to them. Because they'll never come in and walk this aisle and give the preacher their hand and give God their heart if we don't go out and show them the love of Christ with no strings attached. With no strings attached. Because guess what? I mentioned on Bible study this past week that, uh, and y'all, the next, the next day I went into Walmart and I talked about the fact on Bible study that they're direct TV people. How many no's they have to get before they get a yes? You've got to be prepared to hear no before you'll ever get a yes. And when we evangelize and go out and do outreach and get into the community, we already got to have it in our mind that we're going to get a whole lot more no's than we ever will get yeses. But all of the no's will be worth it because if I can help one somebody along the way, then my living will not be in vain. So it's not about the fact that, 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 that they don't know. It's about us showing them the love of Christ. And one methodology of how we do that is to go out and meet their needs as best we can with no strings attached. Even if they never come to our building, we know that we show them the love of Christ. Now, we do it with hopes, with intentions that they will come and be a part of this local body, this local assembly of believers. But guess what? You got to do it regardless because it's what Jesus said do. Don't worry about it. I got a Bible for you. The Bible says in Matthew 25, you, what have you done for the least of these? When people were hungry, did you feed them? When people were thirsty, did you give them something to drink? When people were naked, did you clothe them? When people were on lockdown, did you go and see about them? When people were sick, did you go and see about them? It's our responsibility if they never come into the building. Jesus says it's our responsibilities because he said the separation of the sheep and the goats is going to be determined by did, what did you do for the least of these? And what you've done for the least of these, you've done unto me. And what you didn't do for the least of these, you didn't do for me. And I don't know about anybody else, but when we do outreach, Pastor, why do we give our gas cars? Pastor, why are we giving our baskets of food? Why do we have a free clothes closet? Why are we going and doing pop-up blessings at different stores during Christmas time? Because guess what, brothers and sisters? Somebody needs it, and if we have it to the best of our ability, it's our responsibility 
responsibility to go out of the walls of the church and do ministry in our society. Bible says, so somebody said, well, pastor, what does that got to do with the feeding of the 5,000? I'm glad you asked the question. And y'all give me literally, give, give me 10 minutes and I'll be out of your way. Number one, our text shows us that Jesus and the disciples, we see the need of the people. We see the need of the people. We focus on the fact he made a way. But first, we got to see that there's a need. And number one, they're outside. They've gone outside the walls of the church, and these people are following Jesus, but guess what? They have a need. What you talking about, Pastor? The people were hungry. The text says it, because the disciples says it. They say, well, Pastor, Jesus, why don't we send these people on back? Because they've been with us all day, and they're hungry. They, they, they are nowhere near the market. They are nowhere near where the food is. So, so let's go on and send them back so they can have some travel time to be able to get back to their food so that they could be able to quench their thirst and, and fulfill their hunger that they have. But Jesus saw this as an opportunity outside the church uh, with people that had a need. He saw this as a means and a way to meet the need and do ministry. This is what outreach ministry. I know some of y'all have never looked at this text like this as being something that's outreach, but it's actually outreach ministry. It's outreach ministry. They were hungry and their spirits were being fed, but their bodies were hungry. We cannot, as the body of Christ, only be concerned about feeding people's spirits and their souls and will leave them hungry in their natural. Let me let that marinate. Uh We cannot be only concerned about feeding people's spiritual needs, but not concerned about their natural needs. It's our responsibility as the body of Christ to feed them, to feed the hungry, to to quench the thirst of the thirsty. It is our responsibility. We see the need of the people. And brothers and sisters, that's our responsibility. And as I walk outside of 1670 Gaither Street, we got houses all around us. As I come down Gaither, as I come down Person, as I, as I go on Marjorie, as I go on all of these other streets in our immediate neighborhood, we don't have to go far to find where ministry is needed. If you just simply walk right, matter of fact, I, I want to, us to be able to do, do a caravan around our neighborhood of our church to be able to just ride around and see and write down all the different needs. Matter of fact, y'all do that on your own. If we can't come together, y'all just come around the church and just drive around the neighborhood and see the fact that that because you treat you may treat your neighborhood better if it look better. It can vacant lots. Can we mow the lawn? Can, trash that's on the ground. Can we pick up the trash? And, and the, 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 there's so many things that we can do in the neighborhood, uh, in our immediate communities, brothers and sisters. And it's our responsibility as a church, as the body of Christ, to do our part. Notice, we're not a big church. We're not a large church as it relates to numbers, as it relates to budgets, uh, as it relates to a, a whole plethora of different ministries. But guess what? We can do our part. And if every church in the body of Christ does their part, then guess what? We can strike a mighty blow. I feel my soul, my soul food coming up. And we can strike a mighty blow against poverty. We can strike a mighty blow against economic inequalities. We can strike a mighty blow against inequalities in education. We can strike a mighty blow. What if everybody in this neighborhood went down to the school board and told them that we want the same kind of resources for schools in our hood as they got in Collier Hood? Y'all do know it's Collierville. It's Collier Hood because guess what? They got some hood stuff going on out there in Collierville too. They just don't put it on the news like they put our stuff on the news. I wish I had somebody that would help me preach today. But the reality of it is, if we come together, I'm going to get to that in just a minute, y'all. But we see the need of the people. If we at the church, we as a church, only think that we are needed uh, in here, then brothers and sisters, we miss the mark. Certainly we're going to do in reach where we bless people with Thanksgiving baskets. That's, that's specifically for our people. But we did Christmas as outreach. We have to, as a body of Christ, have to push forward out of our comfort zone and leave these doors to go serve the communities that we live in. So, brothers and sisters, number two, number one, we see the need of the people. Number two, we see the strategy of the leadership. 
I know we normally look at this text and see only he did two fish and five loaves of bread and that he uh, he fed 5,000, not including women. And I know that's what we have normally looked at this text to see. But we see, secondly, the strategy of the leadership. What you're talking about, Pastor? When they told when when, Je- when they said, send them away, Jesus said, no, sit them down in groups of 50. Our particular text here, John's gospel says just sit them down. Uh, but Luke, uh, Luke and, and Mark and Matthew, they say sit them down in groups of 50. Why? That was strategy. Because it's easier to identify who you have served if they are already in groups. Jesus didn't just do miracles, but Jesus had strategy. He came together and figured out what's the best way that we can service the needs of the people. So, brothers and sisters, it's imperative for us to go and understand that as we go about doing outreach, we'll have strategy. We're not like a shotgun blast where we just got stuff going, but we want to have a laser beam focus that that whatever the need is and how do we go about doing it? I remember when we did pop up blessings uh, last Christmas uh, for the Christmas for last uh, in 19, where we had groups that went to different for four different. And some of y'all don't even know this stuff that then went on in your church. We've done outreach. So just let me give you a, a a rewind of the outreach that we have done. You had members of your church where we should have had a whole lot more. We, but we had a small group of faithful few that went to four different places, uh, stores in the heart of South Memphis. And they went about uh, just being around the store. We partnered strategically with the ownership of the stores. We had to go and talk to them first because we didn't just want to be in their stores. But we partnered with them and said, we just simply want to bless people. With no strings attached. We're going to talk to y'all and we're going to sit around and just watch. And we'll let the Holy Spirit lead us and look at the condition of uh, of mothers or somebody that may look like they may be struggling during Christmas time. Because y'all do know folk are, are suicidal and folk are depressed during Christmas time because they can't seem to have enough funds to be able to give their children uh, the, the kind of Christmas that they wanted. But if we're able by, by what we have through our tithes and offering, brothers and sisters, what we can do is be a blessing to somebody. Somebody else. It was just it was just fifty dollar gift cards. But there was one woman down at Roses, down on Third Street. When we gave it to her and blessed her, she was at the register. I told this story, but let me say it again. She was at the register, and she was on the phone with her boo, and they were calculating on the phone what they had enough money to buy that would have the biggest bang for their buck to be able to bless their children. And I was able to walk up to her and to the register and say, "Ma'am." I'm from Shallow Baptist Church. I'm the pastor. Can we be a blessing to you for Christmas? And, and she said, yeah, I got a $50 gift card, and I want to be able to give it to you to help you cover uh, what it is that you're trying to do to help your kids. I gave it to the cashier, and the woman hugged me and started crying. Because she said, Pastor, that's just what I needed to be able to. Many of us got so much money that we ain't had a problem uh, being able to give our children what we have desired. But there's somebody out here that needs that, that, that which you take for granted. So that's why we have to go outside the walls to be a blessing to those individuals that are in need. In our own personal lives, we struggle and fail many times because we don't strategize. Jesus strategized, put them in groups of 50 so that we can best serve them and know what's going on. And as we do outreach, we're not just doing it willy nilly, but we are strategizing so we can be the best blessing to those that strategy got to be that we got to go and see what the actual needs are. What do the people see? Because we could be spinning our wheels uh, trying to do stuff that folks say we don't even really need that, Pastor. We actually need this. You, it, ain't, it don't do you no good to constantly have gas in the car, but you actually need some oil in the car. So you want the resources to be where they're best served. Number one, we see the need of the people. Then we see the strategy of the leadership. So last but not least, and I'm done. Last but not least, I'm done. We see the unity of the team. We see the unity of the team. The unity of the team. It's in the text, y'all. Y'all know I'm not making it up. It's in the text. I know that we look at the feeding of the 5,000. We only think about the miracle that Jesus did. Yes, we shout about that. But there's some lessons that we can learn in this text. And when the Holy Ghost gave it to me, I was like, you know, Lord, I ain't never looked at it like that. So I'm just as blown away as some of y'all are right now. I look at it, but the unity of the team. Look at, look at the players in the text. The boy had the resources. 
the Bible says that this, that they, then it says that the disciples said that we got this little lad. So what the disciples did, they found the resources. The little boy had the resources, but the disciples went out to find the resources. And then last but not least, they brought it to Jesus. That's, that's the boy. That's the disciples. That's Jesus. And when they came together, they fed 5,000, not including women and children. Y'all missing the shout. I said the boy had the resources, but the disciples went and found the resources. Let me stop right there because they went and found the resources. Somebody saying, well, pastor, we ain't got no lot of money in our church to be giving away no money. Why are we giving away money? And let me throw this in for free. I want us to get to the point that literally 10 percent of our yearly budget we give away in outreach. Why? Because if you all are tithing. We should tie to the community to be a blessing to the. I think that just makes sense, y'all, that if we take 10 percent of our budget and not spend it on stuff that don't matter, but spend it on stuff where our community would be better because we're tired of looking at certain things and dealing with certain things and our people are struggling. We should be able to do that. But we got to come together as a team. Guess what? Somebody said, Pastor, we ain't got no lot of money. But guess what? There are agencies that many of you all are connected to that know, that you know about that you will not even tell us about that we can bring together with our ties and offering and have a bigger impact on our community. That's called teamwork coming together. So, so the boy had the resources, but the disciples did the work to find the resources. I challenge somebody right now that is under the sound of my voice, wherever it is you got connects to, we need to hook up, holly if you hear me, because we're simply trying to be a blessing to people. And if you know ways and you know uh, got connects and we're going to partner with and do a food giveaway with MIFA. And if you know people that got dressed for success or you know that individuals for job readiness that we can partner with, that anything that can be a blessing to our community. Guess what? You ain't got to live in this community to be able to be a blessing to this community. But if you're going to church in this community, you should be willing to use your resources that you have found to be a blessing to us because if outreach is part of the DNA of our church, then guess what? You need to bring all resources, all hands need to be on deck so that we can be a blessing to everybody that's in need. And guess what? Somebody say, well, pastor, we ain't got no lot. I know we don't. I look at the budget. I know what we got. But guess what? The boy had the resources. The disciples went and found the resources. And then they had sense enough to take it to Jesus. Uh, when you got resources and when you find resources, you ought to have enough sense to put it in Jesus' hands. And when they put it in Jesus' hands, the Lord stretched it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He stretched two fish. And because y'all do know, Philip said, what is this among all of these people? But when you put it in the Lord's hands, I'm trying not to get too excited right here, y'all. But when you put it in the Lord's hands, we just get, now we get into the miracle, y'all. When you put it in the Lord's hands, two fish, five loaves of bread. I wish I had a witness in here that don't mind testifying that he will take your little bit. And taking much, little is much in the hands of the master. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that know that the Lord will take your little bit and stretch it to overflow? He will take your tithes and have you having blessings coming from every which way around you. Because we have done our part. We had a heart to do outreach. We had a heart to help somebody. We had a heart to want to be a blessing to somebody. We see the need of the people. We see the strategy of the leadership, but we see the unity of the team. When it comes together with, with the resources that you got and the resources that you got and the, the hookups that you got, and we all get, bring them together and we got a heart to want to bless people, then guess what? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of us. The things we'll be able to do in the name of our Lord. Y'all, I'm closing. But I want to say this. I want to say this. That I, that I, um, I found out recently that I don't like blueberries. I don't like the taste of them. I, they, they're a little bitter to me, the ones I, I got. They wasn't, they wasn't the best tasting in the world. Uh, personally, uh, that it was, was not something that I would want to eat on a regular basis. Uh, personally, I don't like plain muffins. I don't like plain muffins. Uh, They're they just missing something. But when you merge blueberries, unify them with 
a good fluffy sweet muffin. Y'all, I'll tear up a whole pack because they have power when they come together. Uh, it tastes better when they come together. And I'm simply saying to somebody, when we come together, when we see the need, when we follow the strategy, we'll be able to come together and be able to have what they had. What did they have? They blessed uh, 5,000 men, not including women and children. And the Bible says that they had food left over. When you put it in the Lord's hands and you remain unified, the boy had the resources. The disciples went and found the resources. And Jesus blessed the resources. I missed this shout, y'all. The Bible says that they brought the resources to Jesus and Jesus gave thanks for the resources. And if the Lord got, a re- got sense enough to give his father thanks for the resources, to be able to be a blessing to somebody else, we ought to be, have sense enough to give God thanks for whatever it is that he has given us so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Shallow. If we ever want to save souls, transform lives, inspire purpose, we're going to have to do outreach. And next week, I'll tell you how we'll go about doing it as we look at service. How do we serve next week? But I thank God that I have a church that I pastor that never fought me about doing outreach. I came in early for Easter. We did a whole extravaganza. We were able to bless. And the leadership came together and trusted my vision to say, okay. Because it's in the DNA of this place. But I need everybody. Because sometimes we don't have a problem with worshiping. But outreach takes work. And sometimes we're present for worship and absent for the work. As long as I'm the pastor. We're going outside beyond the walls. I cannot and will not pass the church that refuses to to that refuses to do outreach ministry. But I'm so glad that God placed me at 1670 Gaither Street at a church with a people that see it. Well, Pastor, what you preaching about? Because not everybody gets it. Nobody, not everybody sees where outreach is in the Bible. But y'all, all of my points were right there in the text. They're right there. It's in the Bible. I got Bible for you. We, we don't make this up. But I challenge us to not just do outreach, but for us to have outreach in our hearts. It's bigger than you, baby. But you got to be included. It's bigger than you. But we need you to be included. So why do you give? Why we need you to tithe? Why we need you to give offering? So that we can be able to do outreach without a struggle and a strain. It's through your giving that we were able to bless people with gas costs. It's through your giving that we're able to have bouncers. Matter of fact, let me give you this and we're done. Door to my father's house is open. But we connected with resources. Y'all remember when we had that? Church didn't pay for the bouncer, for the kids. But somebody partnered with us. Because somebody knew what the resources were. And told them what we were trying to do. Because you know what I found out, y'all? About rich folk that got plenty of money. They want to give it away. If nothing else, they want a tax (laughs) write-off. Amen. Whatever your reason is, <laughs> let the Lord send you our way. Y'all know some people that you connected with. And you'll find out if you just simply I ain't ask you to beg nobody. But if you just simply ask. Matter of fact, sometimes you ain't even got to ask. If you'll just open your mouth and talk about what your church is doing. Then I want to be a part of something like that. And they'll give more than what you would ever think of. So I want us to go beyond the walls because we see the need of the people. Let's follow the strategy of the leadership and make sure we're unified as a team that we may be able to save souls, 
transform lives and inspire purpose. I pray, I pray today that something has been said to help invigorate you. That something has been said. Somebody didn't give today. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm just following the spirit now, y'all. This ain't in my notes. This wasn't planned. But there's somebody that didn't give today. But the Holy Spirit is challenging you to go back and give. Call me this week if you know some hookups on how we can be a blessing to people. Those individuals today that can tithe. Because somebody says, Pastor, I can't afford to tithe. You can't afford not to tithe. Because some of the struggles you have is because you're not tithing. Because he doesn't just open up the windows of heaven for you, but he rebukes the devourer for your sake. It ain't just about him giving it. But Bible says he'll help you to keep it. God, when you tithe, God will make it where you ain't got to, he might not give you new money. But he'll make it where you ain't got to spend old money. So why are you talking about giving, Pastor? Because I want you to see and know the kind of church and what we're doing with your giving. To do outreach. So go back. Get on Cash App. Get on Givelify. Write a check. Give. We need it. Not that we broke. But we can always use more to do more ministry. We don't want your, more of your money so that we can just sit and say we got money in the bank. We want your money, your giving, so that we can do more ministry. And you can be godly proud of your church. That this is what my church is doing. Don't it feel good, y'all? To be able to say this is what my church is doing. This is what we're doing on our spot of ground. This is how we are blessing people. Because there's a bad indictment that says churches just want your money to do nothing. To pay the pastor. No. We want more money so that we can bless more people. Amen. To show them the love of Christ. And if we go where they are and show them the love of Christ, they'll be more apt to come and see more about this man named Jesus. Because it's all about him. Amen. It's all about him. You can come by letter, candidate for baptism, a Christian experience. Won't you come? He loves you. He cares. He'll be there for you. And if you haven't been baptized, haven't given your life to Jesus, today is a good day to give him your life. He loves you unconditionally. Jesus, I love you. Because you can Because you can I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine why we ought to do outreaches because he's always been there. He's always been there. And I want you to join today to get, become a part of the body of Christ. To not just to continue to watch. But I invoke you to give him your life. Give him your life. Or maybe you're already saved but don't have a church home where you're going and growing. Shiloh's a mighty fine place. It's a mighty fine place. You can simply inbox us and let us know that you want to be a part of this family. For those that are saying, Pastor, I got to wait till I come back at church. No, we believe in online members. We have gotten several members since we have been part on Facebook Live. Inbox us so we can put your name on the road. So we can keep you connected, add you to the fix. Let you be a part of what we're doing. So we're going to lift this up so you can make a decision. If you love Jesus, come on. Walk the virtual line. Come on, lift your voices. Because you care. Jesus, I love you. I love you, I love you. Because you care. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Jesus, I love
Lift your voice to Jesus. Because you can. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Come on, lift your voice. Let's take it again. Jesus went. To Calvary, to save a wretch like you and me. Can I tell y'all what he did for us? They hung him, they hung him high, stretched him wide. God said, For me, he died. I want to let y'all know we don't serve a day a dead savior, but that's not how glory is. Three days later, he rose again. Y'all come on here, right where you are. This is why we do outreach because of the sacrifice he made. But that's not how the story is. Three days later, he rose again. You can give him your life today. Come on, give him your life today. He's not dead. He's yet alive. But that's not how the story is. Three days later, he rose again. Yeah. One more time, Wes. Yeah. But that's not how the story is. Three days later, he rose again. Again. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. We love you today. Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you. We thank you for those for joining us to be a part of our worship experience on today. We pray that something has been said, a prayer has been prayed, a song has been sang, that has been a blessing to your life. We simply ask that you join us again Wednesday for 6.30 p.m. for Bible study. Uh, we ask that for those individuals, I challenge you to go on and sow. If you didn't give earlier, give Lafay, Shallow Baptist Church. Cash App, dollar sign, SBC Memphis. Come on and give and help us to be able to do outreach. To be a blessing to somebody else. We're going beyond the walls. We go beyond the walls to be a blessing to others. Let us continue to keep each other lifted. Continue to pray for our country. As we now venture toward the inauguration, we know that there are some things that we yet still are trying to overcome. So we simply ask for us to remain vigilant and watchful of concern of yourselves. And we're asking that you pray for our country, our city. Be safe. 
to know that God is yet on the throne. Amen. Amen. Let us pray and then we'll sing our way out of here. God, we thank you and we love you. We magnify your name. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. God, continue to be with us as we continue to have a mindset to go beyond the walls. We lift you up and we magnify you. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God. Be dominion, power, and majesty, majesty both now and forever. May the Lord keep you. May he strengthen you. May he lift up his counsel above each and every one of you and give you peace, give you peace, and give you peace. Come on, let's bless God and say amen, amen, and amen. Let the church say, 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 listen, we're still alive. Thank you so much, Mary Francis. I, I completely forgot. I thought we had did another week. Thank you all so much for blessing me for my birthday. It was an amazing birthday. I love you all so much, so much, so much. It was a wonderful drive through. Uh, I've read every single card and I love you um, and all the feelings you all have expressed to me. I feel them exactly towards you, but thank you so much uh, for your kindness, your love. I'm clear. You all love me. And I love you too. We thank God for each and every one of you. Y'all be blessed.